Mezun TV'den herkese merhaba. Bugün ikinci İvek Kongresi'nden size sesleniyoruz. Yanımda Profesör Stephen Chapman var. Kiel Üniversitesi'nde kendisi çok büyük yenilikleri imza atmış bir kişi. Hemen konuya gireceğim ve sanal hasta ve sanal gerçeklik üzerine yapmış oldukları hakkında kendisine bazı sorular soracağım. Welcome Dr. Chapman. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. We have watched you giving a great presentation on the use of technology on teaching medicine to medical students and uh, you talked about virtual patients and you talked about virtual reality. So if we come to virtual patients, how did this come up? What is the use of virtual patients in medical okay. e education? Well, the challenge for all healthcare professionals, not just medics, but pharmacists, nurses, pharmacists, physiotherapists, is we need to have increased clinical content in our courses. We need to understand how to interact with patients. So it's not the technical issues which you can learn in the classroom, it's how to deal with people, the emotional intelligence if you like. Now, the only way you can embed that with students is for them to practice. But the main challenges we have in getting our students to practice with patients are twofold. the standardization and there's access. So to still deal with the standardization issue first, the thing with standardization is, if we were to use real patients, which we do do, we bring patients into the university or we send our students out to the hospitals or to primary care clinics, and you take a group of six to 12 students, the first student will talk to the patient, they'll have an intelligent conversation, the patient will be receptive and willing to help. They usually do, they want to help train students. But then when you get to the second student, they get a little bit tired. And then the third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, by the time you get to the seventh, eighth, ninth students, the patient is tired, they're bored, so they change the story a little bit. So by the time you get to the twelfth student, they have a completely different experience. So the joy of technology is, it never gets tired. Everybody has the same experience, so if you're assessing them, particularly for exams, everybody has the same experience, everybody is assessed the same way. Very important. The second issue is access. If I want to teach a student about hiatus hernia at two o'clock on a Tuesday afternoon, I have to be really sure there is somebody with hiatus hernia at two o'clock on a Tuesday afternoon. And again, that's not always possible. Maybe in a hospital setting where there's always a ward and you, you can usually find something interesting. But if you send somebody into the community and say, for a pharmacy student, we want you to look at hay fever, emergency contraception, and a migraine, they could stand there all day and a patient like that might not come in, which wastes everybody's time. So this way, they can access these cases to practice on themselves in their own time 24-7. Standardization and access are the main reasons you actually you wanted to create this avatar program. Absolutely. And the third, I suppose, underpinning all this is the ability to practice in a safe place. Make your mistakes in a virtual environment. Don't make them for real. So virtual reality is not a substitute for dealing with real patients, but it's an excellent way of preparing students to deal with real patients. So that means when you do have that precious time with students and patients, it's well spent. They know what they're doing when they're getting there. They can approach the patient properly, which is good for the student and it's good for the patient. And actually I've seen when you were presenting that there are different approaches. There is like the one that they can select from drop down yeah. when they're answering the patient during using the avatar program. And there's also a second one, which is a kind of a little bit, maybe we can say a little bit direct. And the third one is a kind of a little rude one. Yes. Right. The, the, we, the, we always, there are several ways of approaching this work. Um, the technology I showed at the conference uh, today was uh, asynchronous technology. That means that all the responses are pre-programmed in. So the student, the great advantage of this is the student can access it whenever. They just go on, the answers are there, they ask the right questions, they'll get the right answers. Mm -hmm. When I say the right answers, that comes in one of two ways. They can have a drop-down menu, so they can choose from the responses, and within those responses, as you quite rightly say, there'll be the ideal one with technically correct and 
the emotional intelligence and the, right the way through to the root one. Now importantly, uh, from a learning point of view, the avatar doesn't stop and correct the students. They carry on through the interview and they have to deal with the consequences of what they say. So if they ask a rude question, they'll get a rude response and then they have to deal with that and that will carry on till the interview closes. Professor Chapman, I would like to ask you uh, another very, very exciting uh, project, which is, you call it CAVE, the virtual reality room. Can you provide a little bit of information about that? How did that idea come up? And I know it's about five years ago you came up with this, and you're one of the creators of this great project. What would, how did that come up? Okay, well I was working with our IT director, a guy called Luke Grace Goodle, who's very smart with his IT. And we started with the avatars, and what we thought about was, um, when you're looking at a small screen or a computer, um, sometimes it's not as involving as you'd like it to be. We thought, wouldn't it be great if you could have an immersive experience? So we looked at the technology available and we discovered, um, certainly within the car industry, that they were starting to use caves. So we investigated this technology and it is, you can probably see on the screen behind exactly. me now, yeah, a cube. Behind that cube is actually relatively simple. It's just com computers with projectors that, that, that, that throw images back, project them onto the wall with mirrors to stop shadows coming in. You can put the 3D glasses on, walk into the cave, and experience any 3D environment you want to create. So basically, anything that provides a digital output becomes a digital input. So we have a whole hospital ward, we can have a family doctor's office, we have a pharmacy, um, you could put a human, body. a human body in there, output for an MRI scan, x-rays, you name it. Yeah, you can actually show uh, in the presentation, most likely it's in the background right now, instead of showing the scans of the brain, you can basically go one by one, you can right? Slice it. Yeah. You can slice it do and around and all this. How many people can fit in this cave? At the moment, uh, in the cave we have, you can have about half a dozen people inside the cave. Half a dozen. And about 20 people outside the cave watching. And that's how we tend to use this as a teaching tool. So one group will go in, the others will be observers, and they swap over. And each time you change the program just slightly, so nobody does exactly the same thing. Amazing that that's too. a small thing about technology. Yeah. But of course, it's not, it, the joy of things like the cave is, is very flexible. So as well as teaching your clinical skills, you can use it for teaching your chemistry and your pharmacology. Um, as I've said, the nature of medicine is changing, so we're going from small chemicals to big protein molecules. The medicines of the future are going to be big proteins. And these are very hard to conceptualize because they're three-dimensional. But if you put them into the cave, you can see them as they are. And immediately it's obvious how these things work. So, great teaching tool. Uh, great. So, what is, you think, the next phase of it? You know, we are, we're hearing a lot about Oculus, Rift, all of these. Uh, what do you think about those new technology that's coming up? Okay, well, we've, we've expend, experimented so far with two forms of new technology. Uh, one is the Z-Space. I don't know if you've seen this. This is a tablet that you put glasses on and you can lift objects with using a stylus. And the other is the Oculus Rift. I think they both have potential. And it's a question of using the right technology for the right effect. So if you want a completely immersive environment, the Oculus Rift is great. I think the challenge with the Oculus Rift at the moment is it's still a little bit first generation technology. Yeah. It's, a little bit it's a little bit clunky, it's a little bit heavy on the head. Um, and at the moment, the other disadvantage is it's hard to deal with another person. So if I'm in the cave, um, one of the things we do will have say a medical student, a nursing student, a pharmacy student in the cave together discussing one virtual case. Now that's very natural if you stood in a room. If you put the Oculus Rift on and three of you are wearing those, that's not quite so natural. But there are things you can do that would adjust for that. Mm -hmm. So you could, for instance, by using the Oculus Rift, still have the ward, but then have a virtual tutor that you see, yep. glasses that could come in and help you. Yep. So there's all sorts of developments here. So that would be a lot more inexpensive to to get yeah. this once it's ready, but it looks like with the cave, you've already gone all five years you've been testing it and it, it works great. It works great like any other technology, you know. 
It gets, yeah. It, it will get more sophisticated and more sophisticated things will come along without a shadow of doubt. Um, you know, we could be using holograms, we could be using Oculus Rifts or something like that. Or HoloLens, you know, Microsoft is coming yeah, yeah, yeah, up yeah, or yeah. others. Anything, yeah. anything like that. Um, in, in terms of the expense, I think the cost will come down. Like all technologies, remember, uh, my, the first computer I ever used filled the room and I put punch cards into it you know, and was hugely expensive. My phone has more computing power now than that, than that computer, huge computer. Huge computer 20 years ago. The same is going to happen, I'm convinced, with this sort of technology. When we first invested in the cave, it was a significant capital expenditure. Now you could put a cave up for round about £100,000 sterling. £100 sterling. So, which is... Yeah. Not bad. Yeah. I and mean, of course, an Oculus Rift, a unit for an Oculus Rift is a lot less expensive. Of yet. course. Yeah. And one could see if you wanted to teach a cohort of 60 or 80 students with Oculus Rift, perfect for chemistry, perfect for pharmacology, and maybe it could be adjusted. And maybe, you know, that's something we'll look at in the future. Maybe we'll do a. You can do maybe mix and a, match. A compare and contrast. Yeah do a scientific exactly. study to see strengths and weaknesses of both. Definitely. Sir, it was great to have you on our show. Thank you very much for coming here, spending your time, giving your time for us. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Thank you very much, sir.